Hello, welcome back to another Mythbuster. This one, I'm not sure where I heard it. Maybe it's self-inflicted. I know I have heard this mentioned by younger collector or newer collectors in the last few years. But for me, for myself, I think it was something that I built into my brain as a young collector. When I started to collect in the 80s, seeing the war books at my LCS and see that they are worth more money or cost more to buy, prompt me to believe that something older is gonna worth more money, okay? I didn't equate anything else, you know, I see the Bronze Age X-Men that was printed in the late 70s was costing 20 50 100 dollars on the wall so i'm just like wow if that's the case then the stuff in the 60s is gonna be insanely expensive and then the stuff in the 40s my god forget it out of reach okay so my assumption and the myth was if something is older it's unaffordable and over the past Many years, I have heard many collectors talk about, oh, I just started in this hobby, you know, I'm, I have yet to graduate to golden age or silver age or bronze age because it's going to be more expensive or something like that, okay? I'm sure you have heard something similar or experience or live through that myth in your early days in this hobby, right? Raise your hand if you agree or disagree. Once again, don't forget there is a poll up there that you can either agree or disagree or Nick is whack. <laughs> I put that choice up there because it's just for fun. But I'm sure some people would click on that just for fun. Anyhow, so for many years, I believed this. Okay, for many years, I believed this and for whatever reason, even when I bought my first price guide a few years later, I think two years into the hobby, I bought my first price guide. That's when I start to see Golden Age books because I can't remember seeing any Golden Age books on the wall at my LCS back in those years. Here is my very first copy of the price guide that I bought way back in. 1983 it is the 12th edition so it came out summer of 1982 roughly a year after I entered the hobby but being the frugal kid that I was I wait until the summer of the year after and bought an used copy at my LCS for much cheaper but even two years into the hobby I still believe strongly that you know if something is older, it's going to be more valuable or more expensive because as much as I love um, browsing through this, this is so beat up, you know what I mean? The binding is all tattered. Um, at that age, I didn't really, uh, I, I was still very naive, okay? Because I remember rereading and refocusing over the few pages of this magazine in all in this uh, publication i mean in all because there's a list here that talk about you know the most valuable book the top 50 most valuable book like this one right here it's a list of you know hot titles golden edge silver edge these uh most 50 most valuable books i remember looking at this list okay this list right here there are a whole bunch of other lists too as far as um, Silver Age. But from just looking at these two or three pages, I must have looked at them more than anything else. And of course, I equate silver and gold with big money. The youngster in me did not equate that. Yet if you bother to flip through the rest, you would see many older title that aren't worth a lot but you know back then i really didn't focus much on the other stuff because 
not a heck of a lot of pictures. Who cares about look at all those things? I care about the beginning, the ads, okay? I, I love all the ads and nice pictures. And then once you get into the, the numbers, back then, the data geek in me was like, ah, boring stuff. Who care about that? Show me some eye candies. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of older stuff that are not worth a heck of a lot of money. Okay, so in my young mind, that was a myth. And it took me many years later. It took me, I think, until I returned to the hobby um, in 1999 to realize that old does not equate more expensive or more valuable. That's the first time that demands, desirability, <laughs> creep into my mindset that hey you know just because something is old maybe a lot of people don't care and sure enough that was the case so for the past many years I have heard a lot of young collector talk about you know they they, they, they can't afford to buy golden age books yet or silver age books yet because they just assume I did okay it's nothing wrong with that okay I assume the same thing when I was in the, when I was new in this hobby. So for me, that was one of the big myth that was easily, that can be easily debunked the longer you stay in this hobby, okay? And by now, I think if you watch this video and you have been in the hobby for a few years, I'm sure you agree, there's plenty of golden age books that you can't give away, like the Western stuff, yeah? And occasionally there are revival of certain genre like romance or pre code horror or you know some classic cover, you know. How much does a revival of this genre last? I don't know. I'm still waiting for the revival of the Western books and the uh, cartoon books, right? So sometime when it's dead and left behind by the hobby, it stay dead. <laughs> Don't be offended if you like those books and you still like to collect the Looney Tunes and the Bucks Bunny and the, the Dells books, yeah? Yeah, I'm not saying nobody want them, but it's very obvious if you even active on eBay that many of these golden age books in the 50s can be had for cheap. Heck, I sold a lot of them for dirt cheap. Nobody wants them. Not enough people wants them to bid and compete for them. So, yeah, for now, I think most people will agree with me that that's one myth that are commonly agree by many younger, newer collectors are just pure fantasy, okay? It's not true whatsoever, easy to debunk. So keep in mind, age does not equate more valuable, okay? Keep that in mind. Oh my God, I have seen a lot of younger, newer collector emailing me, asking questions like, oh, I just found this old uh, Western books and I checked the census and it's only four copies on the census. It must be worth a lot of money. Should I submit to CGC? You know, you know my reply is gonna be, right? And you know my reply often, when I reply to something like that, even, even if I tried my best to be nice, I'm sure I came across not nice because to sum it up, my answer is don't waste your money. That book that you think is worth something is not worth a heck of a lot. <laughs> Just because CGC census show three or four or five copies and your copy might be the highest grade, assuming you even know how to grade, the likelihood that anybody would care to buy it is not high. Some people will buy it, but is it worth spending 30 bucks to send to CGC when you can't get 30 bucks or maybe you can get 40 bucks? Is it easier to just sell it on eBay raw for 10 bucks and be done, right? Yeah. You, 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 I'm sure there are those that didn't like my uh, reply to that kind of inquiries and unsub me because I come across as a 
arrogant know it all I'm better than other people you know yeah I, I had been accused of a whole lot of things when I face with those kind of questions and there is no easy way to land a soft blow <laughs> don't you agree I'm sure other people can sympathize with me as far as this issue but anyhow I don't want to keep on rambling too long I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mythbuster because this is one easy one to debunk. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.